Hello everyone, Alex here from Zcode Tech and this is going to be a quick video about our scores predictor tool which was developed by our ZLab team some time ago and has been updated recently. This tool is also available as an app for both iPhone and Android which you can find and download from these links towards the right here. So what is the Zcode scores predictor and how does it work? Our scores predictor is a tool that utilizes an advanced scores prediction formula which takes more than 80 to 100 parameters into account, optimized on historical data to perform 10,000 simulations of the game and then predict the anticipated scores. The goal of this tool is to predict not only the winner of the game but also a possible score and the spread which can help you to improve and filter your results when betting on the money lines, spreads, or totals. One thing we must emphasize and clarify is that the scores predictor is not a crystal ball, so you shouldn't blindly place your bets based on its score predictions. The best method is to use this tool as a filter in your current betting approach or combine it with our automated systems. You can also use it to figure out the best value bets based on the Kelly criterion and we'll talk about that later in this video. So remember, Score Predictor is just one of the prediction tools we offer and you can join our Zcode VIP club to unlock all these tools and follow our winning systems. Alright, so let's take a look at the Scores Predictor tool itself. And the first thing you need to do is go to this link, that's zcodesystem.com slash scores predictor. And once the page loads up, just scroll down. And the first thing you'll notice is this sports selection header at the very top of the table. And this is common amongst most of our Zcode tools. You have all the popular sports listed here, so you can easily switch to the sport of your choice. Next, we have this date selector, which is convenient because it allows you to not only check out the games for today, which is the default, but you can also view predictions for past days as well. Next, we have this league selection dropdown. So depending on the sport you choose above, all the leagues available for betting under the sport will be listed in this dropdown. And if you wish to focus on one specific league, you can select that from here. All right, but for now, we're just going to leave it at all leagues. And then this next drop down allows you to sort the games listed either by the leagues involved or the time of the match. And that makes it convenient for you when you want to plan your betting day according to the matches in order of the time. Moving on to the right here, we have a search bar which will allow you to search for a game by either the team name or rotation number. This will come in handy on days when there are so many matches listed. It will be a lot easier for you to focus on the matches that you're interested in. So that's as far as the selection or the filter header goes. Okay. Now coming down to the actual scores predictor table itself as you can see the predictions are displayed as follows you have the date and time of the game or match the name of the first player or team one the second player or team two then the actual score prediction that's made by this tool the confidence percentage of that score as well as the betting predictions for each individual team. And then finally, the actual final score of the game or match. The color coding here shows the confidence levels. And thanks to an update earlier this year, this now shows possible scores up to three days ahead, not only for the current day. Usually, the tool recalculates its predictions twice an hour. And of course, the longer you look ahead, the less accurate it is, but at least you can see further into the future with this tool. Now, depending on the sport you choose, there might be a few changes in the way that the score and betting predictions are displayed. And I shall show you some examples of that with ice hockey and soccer. 
But for now, I'm going to stick to tennis first since uh, its score predictions are displayed in the simplest manner and they're easy to understand. Okay, so we're taking a look at the score predictions for tennis for this particular day. Now the tool's score prediction will be displayed here. Okay, and it's read zero to three, where this first term will be the score of the first player or team one and the second one is the score of the second player or team two. And that's pretty straightforward. This is basically what the tool predicts to be the final score by the end of the game. And right next to that you have the confidence icon, the percentage and color of which will tell you the confidence level that can be placed on the score. Normally we look for high levels of confidence which will be either orange or green in color. Green being the best. And we try to avoid lower confidence predictions, which would be marked in yellow or red, where red would be the worst. In any case, the confidence percentage will be mentioned here. So you can determine if the score prediction is worth taking into consideration or not. Next, we have the betting win percentage for each of the teams. And this is expressed as a percentage similar to confidence, uh, which tells us the probability of winning for this team versus the opposite team. In simple game structures like this, the betting win prediction for one team is calculated as 100% minus the probability of winning for the other one. So for example, you know, in this particular case, if um, player one has a probability of winning at 33.8%, if you were to minus that from 100%, you'll get 66.2. But it isn't so simple when you consider other game outcomes like the draw as well. Now finally, we have the final score, which is very simply the actual score that was recorded for the game or match. So this way you can get a C or compare the score prediction with the actual score once the match is over. Now, remember where I said earlier, um, some of these prediction columns will change depending on the sport you're looking at. So let's go ahead and switch to soccer and you'll see that there are a couple of additional columns here. You have the score prediction for the first half of the game with a corresponding column for the final result of the first half. In other words, this is the prediction for the first half, and this will display the actual score once the game or match is done. And then of course you have the final score, the score prediction for the final score, and the actual final score. And if you notice, you also have one more extra column with betting predictions for the outcome of the draw right here. By the way, if you ever notice the letters OT next to the score prediction, it means that the scores predictor is anticipating the game to go into overtime and it'll show you the anticipated score for that overtime game. Okay, now let's switch to ice hockey and let me show you its more detailed score predictions. Okay. The first thing you'll notice besides the main score predictions are these figures right below in gray text within brackets. These are the score predictions for each period of the ice hockey game. And this is the main score prediction for the game overall. Besides that, you also have betting predictions for each of the outcomes, that is if team one wins, if it's finally a draw, or if team two wins. But these are basically the betting probabilities. So if you're anticipating, you know, team one, the probability of team one winning is only 33.35% here. The probability it might line up in a draw is 90.7%. And the probability of team two winning, which is slightly higher than team one, is 46.95%. So whatever the predictions may be, the last column will show you the final score of the game so that you can compare it with the predictions made. Okay? 
Now, as you can see here, we actually have these two games that are completed. And these two are actually currently in play, which is interesting. So we'll get to see the scores for these games once they're done. Now, besides the main score prediction table here, right below you will also see other sections for value bets, which is just below the main score predictions table. Okay, so the reason why we have this value bet section is because in a day, sometimes you could have tons of games and matches to bet on and it might seem a bit confusing for you to have to try to filter them out so what we've done is we've provided you with this value bet section which will tell you which games uh, have the best value for you to bet on okay so this section is for value bets based only on the tools score predictions and further down you have value bets based on the Kelly criterion, which I shall explain shortly. So remember, these value bet sections are like a summary of the best bets, and they will make it easier for you to simply pick out only the best value bets out of all the games we saw above. All right, so let's talk about the Kelly criterion. We have actually explained this concept before in one of our earlier videos, but I'm going to go through it once again. So the Kelly criterion is basically a bet sizing technique which balances both risk and reward for the advantage gambler. The Kelly criterion determines the optimal percentage of your total capital or bankroll that you can bet on a single outcome or game. In other words, it takes care of your bet stake size. Let me show you what the formula for the Kelly Criterion looks like, uh, taken from Wikipedia. So, F is the fraction of the current bankroll to wager. B is the net odds received on the wager. So, if you're, say for example, if your decimal odds show uh, 2.1 then the value of B would be 2.1 minus 1, which is 1.1. So in other words, B is equal to your decimal odds minus 1. That's the simplest way to remember it. And P is the probability of winning. Um, that's expressed in decimals. The same goes for Q, which is the probability of losing. And that's very simply 1 minus P. So just as an example, if a gamble has a 60% chance of winning, so when you say 60%, your, it means the value of P is equal to 0 0.6, and consequently, Q is equal to 1 minus 0 0.6, which is 0 0.4. And let's uh, say the gambler receives a 1 is to 1 odds on a winning bet, which means uh, his decimal odds would be 2, and if that's the case, then remember what I said, B is equal to decimal odds minus 1. So that's equal to 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. Then when you plug in these values into the equation, you'll see that the gambler or the user should bet 0 0.2, or in other words, 20% of his bankroll at each opportunity in order to maximize the long run growth rate of his bankroll. So what happens here is that these value bets are being judged based on not only the scores predictor recommendations but also the Kelly criterion and the optimal stake size is given here it's expressed in decimals so this is actually you know 0 0.12 of what your bankroll should be so taking a look at the value bets for a day will simplify your betting Okay, you don't really have to go through the entire table of all the bets listed or games listed unless you're probably an advanced or expert user and you're specifically looking for games that you want to focus on. But allow me to just remind you once again, do not make the mistake of blindly following the scores predictor to place your bets. I've already mentioned this before but you should never use the scores predictor as a standalone recommendation. It must always be confirmed with another indicator or factor. Okay guys, so that's about it when it comes down to our score predictor tool. It's pretty simple, like I said, and very straightforward. 
We hope you enjoy using this tool and with the latest updates, it's now better than ever. So cheers guys and you have a great one.